but bless you for sure, yeah. So today we're going to uh, systems with three variables. Now I've been talking about this for the last month, you just, that it's approaching. So we're now here. We get x, y's, and z's in our equations. So we're dealing with, rather than our two variable systems, we get our three variable systems. Okay? So our learning goal, to use elimination and substitution to solve systems with three variables. Now, if you think back to systems with two variables, we use three different methods if you don't count the calculator method. Okay? If you don't count using the calculator, then we use three different methods. We use graphing, we use substitution, and we use elimination. Now, graphing, I want you to know what the picture looks like for these. Like when you see a solution versus a no solution versus an infinitely many, I want you to know what that looks like. But we're not going to actually graph to solve these. Okay? So, um, looking at this, system of equations with three variables can be represented as three dimensional graphs, like the ones we just did. The graph of any equation in the form of ax plus by plus cz equals d is a plane. So just like you did last lesson, you were graphing planes. That's what this is. Okay? So when you have three variables, in order to solve for a single variable, you must have three different equations then. Okay? So when you're dealing with a system, if you have three variables, you need to either know what one of those variables is or you need three different equations to solve for them with those variables. Okay? In a system like these equations, the number of solutions depends upon how the planes intersect. So let's get a picture for yourself. Now these are in these are in your textbook if you really wanted to get them later. But uh, they're page 175 to 181. But here's a picture of a no solution. In order for a system to have a solution, all three planes have to intersect at a single point. Okay, if you look at this plane here, this plane here, and this other plane over here, so if I if I were to kind of label like this is plane A, this darker one that we can't quite see, this would be plane B, and then this one over here would be plane C. Plane A, B, and C, they don't intersect in a single spot, a single location. Okay? They intersect, like B and A intersect in that line, and C and A intersect at this line, and B and C intersect at this line, but they don't all intersect at a single point. So we can't, that means we wouldn't have a ordered triple, right? We wouldn't have that, that x, y, z intercept that we need. Okay? All we have are different lines where they intersect, okay? where two planes intersect. Or you could also have a no solution look like these, where we have that plane parallel to that plane parallel to that plane. Nothing intersects. Okay. If you want a 3D vision of this, this is a this one right here, kind of looking in class. So there's your 3D visual. All three planes never intersect at a single spot. Okay. You have two planes intersecting in a straight line, but you don't have an intersection of all three. Okay. Everyone with me so far? All right. The other picture you can have, just trying to give you these visual representations so you know what you're thinking about. The other pictures you could have are you could have the one solution where you have a single, a single point that all three planes are intersecting in. That's this guy here, where they would all intersect right there. I need a darker pen. Okay. But all of them intersect in a single point, so you have a, an ordered triple, an x, y, z. silver one. I don't know that that's helpful. Let's use the black one. Oh, any of these are helpful. Such a bad. There we go. A little better. But right there is where all three of them intersect. So that point right there would give you an X, Y, Z. And that's really what we're looking for. It's where all three will come to a single point. This one what does that kind of look like? Um, Maybe like a, well, if we cut off that piece, kind of like a book, right? Or a magazine. Okay. If you think of like the binding of a book and all the pages as being a plane, 
all of those pages can come together at a single at a line okay but they don't come together at a single point so all three planes are intersecting which is what we want but they're not giving us a unique solution they're giving us an infinitely many solutions so there's there's solutions they're all on that line but none of them are unique there's not one unique solution there's not one single solution so that's what an infinite many would look like okay, everyone think they have an idea what the pictures are it's kind of what we want there now we're gonna try some problems we're gonna do your assignment today is gonna be 1 through 15 on the example side we're gonna do some of those together as a class you're not crossing anything else out because we're gonna use this tomorrow as well okay but we're gonna start with problem number one together number one says solve each system using elimination Look for subs, uh, substitutions to shorten your work. All right. So we're going to go through one and three, but we're going to start with number one there. So the look, through, look for substitutions to shorten your work. That'll be really helpful as we start progressing. But all right, I want you to try to get that one copied down. You're going to need a separate sheet of paper. So all you uh, that like to do all your work on the paper, that's not going to work here. So go ahead and get that on. Okay, here we go. Number one. First thing I'm going to do, I'm assuming you've copied them down on a separate sheet of paper. You stay with me and make sure you ask questions as we go. I'm going to label these A, B, and C. Equations A, B, and C. And those are going to help me be my, uh, help be my road markers as we progress. Okay? Now the goal when you're solving systems using elimination is you want to eliminate the same variable from all three systems. That's our first step. You must eliminate the same variable from all three equations. or Not all three systems, but all three equations to begin with. So when I'm looking at this, the first equation has an x, a y, and a z. The second has an x, a y, and a z. And the third has an x and a z. z. So what would be the logical variable to eliminate? Okay. Y. y, right? It's already gone from here. That's why, okay? So since it's already gone from here, let's eliminate y from which two? A and B. A and B. List the question? No. No, okay. So what I want you to tell your neighbor right now is how you're going to eliminate y from A and B. Okay, time's up. How do we do it? Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. All right. Um, multiply A by 3. So go 3A. And then what are you going to do to it? Add it to B. Add it to B. So we're going to go 3A plus B. Now notice my, notice the guide I'm leaving myself. The problem with you guys not leaving yourself a map like this, and some of you will choose not to right now. Some of you won't hear me right now. Some of you will ignore me right now. Some of you will just think that you know better than me right now. And that's okay. However, I'm telling you, you better leave yourself a trail. Otherwise, you're going to become frustrated at some point. You're going to ask a math teacher for help, me, Bogle, maybe another one. They're going to say, where's your work? You're going to go, it's right here. And it's like, well, what would you do? Well, I think I, I, uh, I well, I did, uh, I, and, oh, I did this. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense what you're saying. You're like, well, maybe I didn't do that. And then we go around in a circle saying, dude, leave yourself a trail. Okay. So we're saying 3a plus b. So as Alyssa said, we're multiplying this one by 3. That's what 3a means. So 3 times 2 is 6x. And 3 times negative y, negative 3y. And 3 times z, 3z. And 3 times negative 2, negative 6. I always just quick double check. Otherwise, I get to the end, and I messed up, and I don't know where I messed up. And I look back at my work. I did a good job at leaving a trail, however, I forget to maybe multiply 3 times negative 2. And I leave negative 2 there and keep working and finish my other half page and I'm bummed at the end because it was the wrong answer. Okay? And then we write down B. X plus 3Y minus Z. McCoy, do we have to write down B? We know what we're doing. Can we just... I would. That's why I'm doing it. Okay? So I get 7X and we get... 2z equals 4. And that's a positive 2z. This one disappeared. Okay. 
Now, I'm trying to address all the questions I get from students or all the problems I see as we're going. So for those of you who are like, why does he keep saying things like that? It's because those are the problems we see every year. Yeah? Think you got it? Yeah. These two add up and make zero. Is that what you're asking? Maybe. I, I just, I don't really know what I'm, where I'm okay. Hey, we're going to call this new equation we just came up with D. Why? Because it's after C. Okay? It's pretty sweet. So now what do we do? Well, we use our equations that have only X's and Z's in them to eliminate one of those. So we use, like, we do another elimination. So now we're going to use equation C and equation D. Okay, well, what's my roadmap for that? We did 3A plus B there. Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, negative C plus D. If I go negative C plus D, I get negative X minus 2Z equals a to root. Then we got D, 7x plus 2z equals 4 a root, just so it feels better. Okay, these are gone. We get 6x equals 12. 6x equals 12. So x is? 2. 2. Man, that was so easy finding x. x is 2. Well, now that we know x, tell your neighbor how you can find z. Hey, time's up. How can we find z? Yes. We can plug it into our equation c and then find z. Good. We can plug it into equation c and then find z. So if I said I could do it over here, I'm just going to say, well, equation c is 2 plus 2z equals negative 8. So 2z equals negative 10. So z is negative 5. Um, when you do the when you do the d plus negative d plus c, how did you get twelve? I think I might have one of my variables wrong or something. Like that. So I had negative ten and negative eight. I I just subtraction one to elimination, but um, well, you, did you get this for d? No, where did you get the negative six? Uh, we multiplied a by two. Or by three, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Think you got it? You just forget it's changed. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. got it. Now. Okay. Hey, we've got we've got x and z. We can plug those two into any of these to find to find y. So everyone find y if you haven't done so already. Well, any of them except except for c. Yeah, we got to use. I'm gonna go ahead and use b to do it. Y equals 1? Yeah. Our solution, order triple, 2, 1, negative 5. -er. Got it? How could you check your work? Hey, raise your hand, please. Colt, what do you got? Could that's a little tougher. We'd have to have three dimensional graphing. You could plug it into any of the equations, actually. Should work in every one. In fact, it should work in C if I just use x and z. 2 plus 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 2 plus negative 10 is negative 8. Should work in all of them. 2 plus 3 minus negative 5 or plus 5. That's got it. Okay, should work in A. All right. Any questions? Yeah. I fell behind when you did the um, I'll help. Gang. I'll help you out. Okay, I want everyone to try number three with your groupie.
I'm going to pause you. So everyone stop. There's a reason I'm having you pause in between. Okay, so we're at three. You've copied, I've copied it on a separate sheet of paper so I have some room. And the reason I'm pausing you is that way we can kind of stay on, at least on the same track because there's multiple ways we can solve it. So here's A, here's B, here's C. Okay? Now, we have to eliminate the same variable from all three equations. So which variable do we want to eliminate? And this is where some students will say, one, this one. How many eliminated, start, said I'm going to eliminate X? How many said I'm going to eliminate Y? How many said I'm going to eliminate Z? Ooh, let's see. Okay, let's go again. X, go straight vote. So if you had X, raise your hand. I think X's are out. Y's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, Z's. All right, so we're going to eliminate Y. Okay? Hey, that's okay. So if you eliminate another one, you, you can still try to eliminate that one. I'm going to go through Y just because the majority of the class is going through Y. No other reason. Okay? So. If I'm eliminating y from a, b, and c, all right, what do I have to do? Let's say I just start with a and b. What do I have to do? Tyler, what do you got? Well, you would have to multiply a by b. So 3a and then add it to b. Okay, so 3a plus b. So 3a is 3 times 6 or? 18. Okay, good. 18x minus 3y plus 6z equals 24. All right, so there's my 3a, and adding it to b of 2x plus 3y, e or minus set z equals negative 9. All right. Good, so we get 20x, and that cancels, so plus 5z's equals Oops, 15, not 13. Common mistake, though. 15. Everyone with me? That is, this would be equation D. How many are with me right now? Tell your neighbor what you can do to this equation to make it easier. Yes? Would you be able to do all three equations at the same time? No. Okay, what can I do to this equation to make it easier? Connor? Simplify. Simplify. So let's reduce this equation. So the way I'm going to show I'm reducing, yeah? yeah? Can't you divide each side by 5? You can divide everything by 5, or multiply is the way we usually do it. We multiply it by 1 fifth. So I'm going to even show that. I'm going to say I'm going to take 1 fifth of D just to deal with smaller numbers. 4x plus z equals. Three. Okay, so now this is my one fifth of d. All right. Okay, so what I've done now is I've got d. I now need to eliminate um, y from equation c. Now I can use either a or b to eliminate y. Okay, but I have to eliminate it from c now. Okay, so do we want to use equation b with c or do we want to use a with c? A, okay. A has a negative y, and that's a positive 2y. So maybe if we go this one and that one, we are going with how many a or how many? Yeah, how many a's? Two a's plus c. Two a plus c. Now two a plus c, two a's is 12x minus 2y plus. 4z equals 16, and then c, we still have 4x plus 2y plus 5z's equals 1. And we solve. That's gone, that's good. We're left with 16x's, 9z's, and they're positive, so that's plus and equals 17. Oh, those look like ugly numbers. However, that's what it equals. We're going to call that equation E. 
Holy moly. Now, in order to eliminate, what are we going to eliminate from the next equations? What are our two options? X and Z, right? We have X's and Z's, X's and Z's. Now, we've made it a little easier on ourselves because we've already reduced this one. So if I take one-fifth of D, that's this equation, and I add it to, add it to what? Yeah, it's E. That's not going to help me, right? I'm going to have to multiply. I'm going to have to multiply one fifth d by negative four. Now, some of you are like, "Oh, that one fifth is messing me up, man." Like, I see that, and then I've got to multiply it by negative four. So now I have that. That just looks really ugly. Okay, so if you want, you don't have to call this d. What do you, I mean, we could call it. Let's call it f. There. So now we have one fifth of d was actually equal to f. That's okay. So we just now called one fifth d equal to f. So rather than thinking of it as one fifth d, just change what you're thinking. Change it as f. So if I take f and add it to e, that obviously isn't going to work. But if I multiply f by negative four, that would work because then I could eliminate x. Did everyone see how that makes it a little easier to see it? Okay, and it's okay to do that. Just know, you know, know that f be was one fifth of d. Dylan, you with me? Kind of. I don't really get like all the letters and stuff. The letters are just leaving us as road markers. There, okay. we're just naming new equations. Okay. We can't use d for everyone, Dylan. Sorry, man. Oh. All right, you got negative 4f, so that's negative 16 minus 4z equals negative 12. And we got e, 16x plus 9z equals 17. Find out what x is. Well, or excuse me, z. 5z is 5, so z is 1. All right. Found, found an answer. Z is 1. Tell your neighbor what letter you can find now and how you're going to find it. So I'll, hold, hold your question for a minute. Okay. Maybe go through that. Now we can find x really easily. Okay, wrap up talk. Okay, everyone here, let's hear Colt, what's our question? Oh, I'm just uh, wondering why you went from D to E and like why exactly you got the equation E. Because if you already simple, like took the variable y out, why did you just make another x e? You you have you have to take y out of every equation. So in this Yeah, we took it out of A and B by this one. So we had to take it out of C down here. Okay, so you have to use you have to eliminate y from these two, which you've done here, and then you eliminated y from c using a again. Yeah. Okay, so now we've eliminated y from all. Of them. Okay, what variable can we solve for? Yes. Okay, so we could solve for for x by putting z into here. Just Let's just plug it in. So if I take e and I put 1 in, and 16x plus 9 times 1 equals 17. So 16x equals, subtract 9, get 8, right? So x equals, yeah, x equals 1 half. Dude, a fractional answer? Unbelievable. Okay. Tell your neighbor how you're going to solve for y now. So Dylan. When you're solving for x, like, you have to put that, like, letter e. You, 
You can. Yeah, you could just say I'm still using equation E. Yep. That way you're keeping track. My brain hurts. Okay, how are we going to find Y? Yep. Plug X and Z into A. Plug X and Z into, yeah, A or B or C. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use A. So 6 times 1 half plus, or excuse me, I guess it's minus. Should have my pencil in the hand. Minus y plus 2 times 1 equals 8. So we get 3 minus y plus 2 equals 8. So 3 plus 2, we got 5 minus y equals 8. Negative y equals 3. So y is? Negative 3. Negative 3. Ordered triple, 1 half. 1, or excuse me, 1 half, negative 3, and 1. Everyone check the answers. Make sure they work. We know it works in A. Check them in B and C. Make sure that we're clear on how to check, right? 2 times 1 half is 1 minus 9 plus 1. So negative 9. That works. 4 times 1 half is 2 negative 6, so that's 4 plus 5, or negative 6 plus 5 is, excuse me, 4 plus, negative 4 plus, negative 4 plus 5, my goodness, so maybe writing it down, 2, negative 6 plus 5, so that's negative 4 plus 5 equals 1, so we're good, so double checking, thank you for helping me, alright, this is a good answer, make sure you know how to check your work, Right? When you're doing your test and each one of, or this part of the test is worth, I don't know, a quarter, of, uh, you know, or not a quarter, but, uh, um, I don't know, nine points of your test or one-fifth of your test, okay, make sure you know how to check them. All right, your assignments 1 through 15. Now, do your best on them, okay? I will be around to uh, help out a bit. here one more thing those of you that are really upset right now and you're like oh my gosh this is going to take forever well look at numbers four five and six okay number two number two should be um, number two should go pretty easy as well I would I would start on number two by the way I would I would always start on every problem just to try to reduce I change that to x, factor out a 2 out of this. Okay? That helps out tons. It'll make it a lot easier for you to start solving this. Okay? So if you're looking at if you're looking at number 2, this says x plus y plus 2z equals 7. This says x plus y plus 2z equals negative 3. This says x plus y plus 2z equals 1. Tell your neighbor what's wrong with that. That would be the same as 7 equals, equals negative 3 equals 1. Hey, time's up. Hey, guys, this starts saying things like since x plus 2y plus x plus y plus 2z are all exactly the same in every one of them, you could really say this equals that which equals that you're saying 7 equals negative 3 which e or 1 which equals negative 3 is that true no. Yeah. no and whoever said yes you're probably not in the right class right now. <laughs> okay this is no solution okay so it's not quite going to take quite as long as you may think it will um, the other thing is, just a quick hint for some of you, Lee's question was how do, what do no solutions look like? What do uh, infinitely many look, look like? Well, there's one way no, you'll see a no solution on number two. I will tell you that um, on the example side, you're going to have, out of this set of problems, you're going to have three more problems that are either going to be no solution or infinitely many tonight. Three more of them. 
So if you get to one and you're like, I don't get it, I don't know what's happening, maybe that's a no solution, maybe that's infinitely many, but we're going to talk about that a bit tomorrow, okay, on, on what that looks like. I need you to try the problems first, though, okay? There you got it.